Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now, the button below. We are not uh, somebody you keep a, as a hidden secret for yourself. Take the page, all the page, all the teachings and share them to 10 friends and 20 people who are not your friends. <laughs> so that is a da'wah. Don't keep something for yourself, well I don't know if anybody going to like it or not, that's not your problem. Share it, be active, proactive, share the teachings. You don't have to copy and post to make yourself like a shaykh, just share the shaykh's teachings. So that you have some action of da'wah, some sense of doing something and spreading the good word inshaAllah. Look how strong the da'wah of these Wahhabis are. When you look at their, their clicks, 200,000, 300,000, why? They propagate their message, they use all of their masjids as one team because shaitan with them and doesn't make them to fight. Then Ahl Sunnah, shaitan is so strong onto them that not two of them will agree with each other. So at least the people who are following each shaykh go out and send the link to 10 people. Ask 10 people for support, ask 10 people to read the article, ask 10 people to look at the website and what do you think, follow the teaching, follow the shaykh. And this is our way of sleeping peacefully at night, I did something Ya Rabbi. I saw the fire and I did something, I did something to get the attention of Sayyidina Muhammad And that the seven points of the face are the seven points of a chair. When we talk about a kursi in the Divinely Presence, there are four legs of a chair that are its support, two points of the armrest and the seat which is the tongue of the chair. So means that chair for dunya people to understand and for the malakut in the world of light it has to do with that which never perishes, the source of power. That everything will taste of death, every paradise will be extinguished, every angel will die, everything will extinguish except the source of power which is then the holy face. So when awliyaullah understood they say, Ya Rabbi we don't want from the dunya, we know that that's perishing and it's false. And we don't want from your paradises, why would we work hard to have something that's going to be dead and crushed? We want Ya Rabbi, wajallah, wajikil kareem, grant us Ya Rabbi from that which never perishes. Grant our soul to be in that reality, lost in that reality, that which is not perishable. Why well, the first step that Allah said, I want you to make shahada so that you have to say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi Allah doesn't know. Why well, Allah want you to do that? Because Allah wants you to know. Um. Allah knows, He knows what He wrote for you, He knows exactly who you are. But He wants you to know, He wants you to repeat it to yourself and to your nafs all the time. There's nothing but Allah and Muhammad is His Messenger So it means that in our life don't keep something hidden inside you and say, I know, Allah knows. No, even the, the first principle of Islam Allah is saying, say it. Say it so that you will understand and know it and that your nafs will know it and that it become dominant on your whole life. La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah. So what is it that you fear? What is it that you're intimidated by? What is all these things that you're scared of? You didn't say it loud enough for yourself. Because you're still in fear of something. That's why Allah said, the first step, say, La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah What is it that you fear? Why are these things governing you? Same in our lives. If you like it and you love it, email them and tell them. Email and communicate. Don't keep something in your heart. You say, I watch a video and I never make a comment. I get a message from the shaykh and I never make a comment, never even say hello and a thank you. 
and I watch all these things, I'm so happy and I never tell anyone, I never email that I'm happy and thank you. And Allah asking that. Imagine every unimaginably lesser creation because Allah gives the best of manners. Say it so that you know it too and that it's important for you, that you're enjoying it, it's important. Then those people whom they work and none of them get paid, they come, they show up, they do of a khidmat so that they can feel the enjoyment too. Look, look, at least this dawah, this work is being appreciated. People are happy, people are enjoying it. We pray that Allah dress you, bless you, give us a life to see the completion of this Ramadan and don't run into the chandra. Don't, don't let shaitan to fool you. Allah's payday is the last minute. Allah doesn't pay in advance on the hopes that you'll do what He wants. Allah's payday comes the last minute, means then the holiest night of Ramadan is the last night as the Eid is coming. All the rahmah of that night is dressing the servant until he runs to be the first at the Eid and get the reward of that dress. So what shaitan then made is a bazaar on the last night. So that these people he couldn't ruin their Ramadan by their fasting. Let me get them so at least their pay will be cut because <laughs> they're all in the wrong place, not trying to receive the rahmah, doing the zikr, doing the practices. Remember tariqah comes and teaches Allah's payday is the last moment. That's when tanzir rahmah, all rahmah, all blessings, all forgiveness is dressing the servant. Eid al-Fitr must have been given before the Eid. So that it take away all the imperfection of the fasting. If I did a qaybah, if I did backbiting, if I, if I slandered, if I looked at something incorrect, if I heard something incorrect, if there was an error in my fasting, my breaking and my starting, zakat al-fitr will clean that. And that must be distributed to the people inshaAllah. To see yourself with your clothes. At the Rosa Sharif and a nice sunnah outfit, a uh, covered head, all of the, the way of example of Sayyidina Muhammad and see that you're at Rosa Sharif or uh, Holy Kaaba, whichever is coming easier for the servant and then just holding on until Allah sends a najat inshaAllah. Mm -hmm. Quick question about angels, mm. uh, Sayyidi can the angels listen to what we recite if we recite quietly without being loud or vocal at all? Just Curious for understanding the reality if angels can hear our praise recitation if we do it secretly. Yeah, everything is heard by them, the intention is understood even by awliya that you can be silent and make an intention, they can pick up the vibration, they are jasus of the heart. Definitely angels have the ability and definitely uh, malignant beings have that ability to figure your intention and what's moving in the first levels of the heart, not as it goes deeper into the reality of the heart. But definitely to clean the tongue, clean the mind and then the zikr and all the spiritual practices begins to clean the heart and seal the heart. So that these bad khatir and thoughts that are moving in the heart, want to clean them, most have the thought in their heart and then they begin to voice it through their tongue. So the zikr, the practices is to begin to stop that, bring that fire down so that that thought is not even coming into their heart because there are many beings that are picking the signal up of that heart. Oh. It's not something difficult, it's a vibration that emanating and they pick up that vibration to understand it. When you email how, how delicate energy is that if you email or text the shaykh the energy of what you are thinking will come to him before your, your even the words of the email have to be read. That's when Allah says that we seal up their tongue and we question their hands. So it means they don't need to talk to you, whatever you're doing you're putting an intention into that. There's an energy into that, that energy is moving with that document. That's why that when people are angry or dis, uh, disappointed or upset with people, don't write anyone. Because what happens is the energy of what you're upset about will 
contaminate what you write, by the time it goes to the person it can create a big fitna. And people will misunderstand each other and didn't understand because shaitan comes into that energy and to the text. So when people are angry, don't text, call. So it's voice to voice with somebody, you're disappointed at a friend, you want to talk to somebody, it has to be through the voice. Shaitan is less likely to play with that. But when you text somebody and you think it was mellow, they can pick up a different signal because shaitan plays with them. But for the shaykhs and for the understanding of energy, they pick up the energy of what people are even writing. So it means that keep yourself in wudu, keep yourself in a state of, of goodness and happiness and write only good things. If you start to try to use this channel towards bad, they po probably put you on a spam block <laughs> so that you can't come in and keep putting that type of fire into that. Thank you very much inshaAllah. Allah bless you. See everybody tomorrow night inshaAllah. Mm. Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel, your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings, and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly, join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe.